Hello, everybody, and welcome to T-Studio Demos. Today's basic demonstration will show you how to do three simple pen and ink hatching techniques using an image of a cube as reference. Here's today's list of supplies, drawing paper, a 2H graphite pencil, an ink pen. I have a variety of pens shown here, and I'll tell you about them in a second. A kneaded eraser, white vinyl eraser, ruler, artist tape, scrap of paper to protect your drawing from your hand. Before I begin, I think I would like to show you the kinds of pens that would work great for this kind of drawing. Now, in no way is this a comprehensive list of materials, just a small sampling of what I had in my studio. This first one is a Shin Han brand touch liner. Comes in a variety of widths and it's a pigment ink. It's waterproof, works really great. The second pen is really common. You can find it just about anywhere. It's the Micron Pigma pen and it's a pigment ink waterproof comes in different sizes you can find the sizes on the cap i think this is a 08 also known as an ot 8 this third pen is a uniball vision elite i like these pens again it's a um, roller gel pen ink is pretty nice flows pretty good it's got this little bit of texture here for your where your fingers grab the pen it's pretty nice. I like drawing with those. Next is the Pilot G2. It's another great gel roller pen. It's also got a little rubber grip, which works really nice. It's comfortable to hold for long periods of time. I also have a Sharpie Ultra Fine Point. Sharpies are pretty good. The only complaint with using uh, Sharpies like this is that it does leave a dot at the end of your stroke. So if you're not fast enough with your marks, um, you can, uh, it will leave that little dot. So you got to pick up your pen pretty quick. Fountain pens are great to draw with. This is one of my favorites. It's a Lamy Safari. I have it loaded with Noodler's brand ink. And lastly, you could do this whole project with a dip pen, which is sort of like this. You buy the handle and the nib separately. You would also need to buy a bottle of ink. Now, for this project, I just decided to use my Uniball gel pen. To start, I'm going to quickly draw three small boxes on my paper. Each will represent a different hatching technique. I'm just going to use my 2H pencil. I'm also going to draw lightly in case I make a mistake in my measurements. Now, I'm just going to use my reference image and I'm going to lightly block in the drawing and I'll repeat this step with each square. Try to draw accurately and lightly so that when you're finished you could erase the underdrawing if necessary. All right, for this first drawing, I'm going to use the technique of contour hatching. I'm going to hatch using parallel lines. To help the viewer understand the volume of the subject, my lines are going to follow the planes of the surface of the cube 
So all the lines on each side will go in the same direction. To build a darker tone, I add more lines on top of each other or close the distance between my strokes. Marks need to be deliberate and quickly drawn. If I draw too slow, the lines get wavy. I need to make sure that I have a target figured out on how dark I need to go. So I like to go a little lighter than I think I might need because I can always add more marks. Once the hatching is down, I cannot erase it. You can see how these directional strokes help the viewer understand the three-dimensional qualities of your subject matter. The second drawing is to be done with the cross-hatching technique. This technique is done by building up tone, adding multiple layers of parallel lines. Only this time, you change direction each time you overlay the groupings of lines. To make it easier for myself, I drew the contour of the box first, and then worked up the shading with my hatched lines. As I draw, I change the paper's position each time I add marks. I'm using a grouping of three to six parallel lines.
The last technique I'm going to show you is that of stippling. This is done by using dots as the shading technique. It definitely takes the most time, but often results in a more detailed, careful building of tone. Now, because this technique takes so long, I decided to speed up the video a little bit. To create darker tones using this technique, I just need to add more dots and reduce the space between the dots. Because it takes a while, you're going to experience fatigue in your hand, arm, or shoulder. So make sure that during the process, you take breaks every now and then to give yourself some relief. I hope you found this demo video useful. Thanks for watching.